Welcome to Live Translation Technologies to look out for it in 2023, and welcome our speaker, Jonathan Hudson, Platform Partner Manager at Interprefy AG, which is actually a really cool product and a really cool company. Thank you very much. Thank you for the lovely intro, and uh, good afternoon, Las Vegas. I never thought I'd be saying that in my life, but here we are. Absolutely superb. So yeah, good afternoon, everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. So my name is Jonathan Hudson. I'm the Platform Partner Manager at Interprefy. And I'll tell you a, bit, a little bit about Interprefy as we go, and also about some live translation technologies to look out for in 2023. So what are we going to talk about today? So we're going to do a deep dive into the live translation technology landscape with some insights into what works best, some options available to event organizers, and how to engage best with international audiences with what's available today. So a couple of interesting language facts for you guys to, to get us going. So did you know only 17% of the world's population speaks English as a first language? It's terrible, isn't it? Um, but actually, there's over 7,000 languages spoken globally, which is an awful lot. But in meetings and events like this one, often English is the only main spoken language, which creates barriers for lots of people from, from different areas and different countries and different cultures, so they cannot understand what's being said. And our mission in life, if you will, is to help break down those language barriers so people can understand what's being said and read the content in their own language. So a little bit about us. We were founded in 2014 in Switzerland, in Zurich, uh, and we kind of revolutionized the simultaneous interpretation business uh, by bringing a cloud platform which enables interpreters to connect remotely into our platform so we can support audiences globally with lots of different language options. And so we've been around for, for quite a long time now in this industry. 2014 seems like a long time ago, right? We've all been through a Corona coaster since then. And, you know, it's been quite an interesting time. Um, but yeah, we're integrated with over 70 platforms, which is brilliant, many of which are here today. And you're in very safe hands as well. We're ISO 27001 certified. So kind of top of the tree in terms of information security. And um, we've supported over 50,000 events globally, which again, feels like an awful lot since 2014. So it's certainly keeping us busy. In terms of customers, uh, we've got customers in lots of different sectors from healthcare and pharma, information technology, the fintech sector. So lots of NGO clients actually. So we're quite blessed in terms we've worked with a enormous range of clients over the years to help break down language barriers. Hopefully there's some, some brands that you recognize on there, I'm sure. Now, one of the things that's very, very important to us as a business is supporting um, kind of reducing emissions and helping kind of save the planet which of course is the front of everybody's mind right now. And I think it's one of those things where a small change can make a big difference. And one of the things we've helped do is to save over 90% of interpretation related carbon emissions. And you think, well, how on earth have we managed to do that? Well, since 2018, we've saved 58.2 tons of emissions, of CO2 emissions, across events which which again feels like feels like a lot that's kind of the output of a of a city if you will and there's two kind of main ways within which we do that the first one is by using our remote simultaneous interpretation platform you don't have to fly interpreters in from all across the world you don't have to put them in hotels you don't have to feed them that can all be done remotely and through our cloud platform so you save an enormous amount on travel costs and accommodation and, um, you know, kind of the hospitality side of, of interpreting, which is great. 
So there's a big saving there. Um, and then of course you don't need to rent and transport around any of the booths that were needed for kind of traditional on-site events because that is also all done through our cloud platform. So the interpreters can literally work from anywhere and connect in through our platform and deliver the interpretation from their own office or their own home without having to take flights all around the globe, which, which is a pretty cool thing. And there's, there's a lovely quote here from one of our clients that says, choosing Interprefy means delivering exceptional service without co with, while contributing to a better world. Feels like a nice thing to do, right? So we're quite proud of that and sustainability is really key to what we try and do with our technology and how we work with our clients. Okay, so I promised you a little bit about event trends and opportunities. So there's kind of three to pull out here, and I'm sure you guys will know these. So the first one is we all know that the world is even more connected through fast technology, I guess, than ever before. You know, our ability to join meetings and go on calls, et cetera, from our own home through super fast internet is, is a real breakthrough. And, you know, the pandemic has definitely made the world a much smaller place to work and to live. I think we're probably better connected than we ever have been. And then the other big trend, and I'd love to get a show of hands on this, is remote working is the new normal. How many of you guys work from home now rather than going into the office? Yeah, it's a lot, right? And a lot better for lots of reasons. It means you can get up when you want, you can shower, go straight to work, it's all good. Um, and you get this wonderful kind of life and work balance, which I think we all appreciate in a way that, we wouldn't, that wouldn't have been possible 10 years ago. And, and it's the fast technology that's helped enable that. So we've got this kind of background of technology and speed and everything being faster and easier, which is really cool. And then in terms of the language access options that are available today, th there's effectively three kinds of services that you can use to break down language barriers. The first one that we've, we've mentioned already is what we call simultaneous interpretation. So done in two ways, either through on-site booths, where you'd have a traditional interpreter set up, they would have a booth and a microphone, and interpret perhaps at a, a live conference or a meeting from the venue. And then one of the things that fast technology and fast connectivity has given us is the ability to do that same role, but remotely. And that's what we call RSI, or remote simultaneous interpretation. So that's number one, which is kind of the, the simultaneous interpretation side of things. The other great thing that we can do is sign language interpretation. And again, two ways to do it. So the traditional way is to fly the sign language interpreter into the venue or the, or the site um, and have them translate and use sign language on stage, which again is fantastic for, for many in-person events. But again, one of the things we've been able to do through fast internet and fast video connections is do that exact same, same thing, but through our platform. So we do that through a video feed. So again, the sign language interpreter can work from anywhere in the world and then use their own camera to feed that straight through into our platform and then into an event platform, for example, like the guys that we work with today. So sign language is super important, of course, for helping breaking down those language barriers. And then the third one, which, which is both a new and an old thing, weirdly, is captioning or live captioning. So that's always been done traditionally through stenographers, which is where you would have somebody basically using like um, a special version of a typewriter to type extraordinarily fast. I think they do about 300 words per minute and then be able to deliver that kind of captioning um, via a stenographer which is very cool and, and is quite a skill if you've ever seen someone doing it. The advancement of AI technology has meant that we can now do this automatically and using artificial intelligence. And you'll see it hopefully running on this screen right next to me. So literally as I speak, our AI engines are turning my speech into captions, which is wonderful for lots of reasons. It, it's really good for helping with accessibility challenges and it helps with comprehension as well because you can be both kind of listening to me and kind of reading at the same time it's a bit like watching netflix with the captions on right which we all do so we can do other things as well 
So live captioning has become a really useful tool, I think, for event organizers and event attendees and audiences all over the world. And it's only modern technology that's kind of made that a possibility today. So we do that in two ways. Obviously, we use our cloud-based technology, and we can do that both at the venue, which is what we're doing here, and then also we can do it online. So everything that you're seeing here can be displayed in an online platform or even injected into one of the only online video platforms that are so widely used today, which is pretty cool. And then I don't think it would be fair to talk about some of the cool trends and uh, opportunities without mentioning this wonderful thing called the metaverse. Have you guys ever used the metaverse? Kinda. Um, it was certainly the big thing last year. And the screenshot here is for an event that we did with the guys at Mootup who have a fantastic metaverse platform. And we used our technology within the metaverse, again, to help break down language barriers. So people who were attending the event could read captions and listen to live translation within the metaverse. And you can do that with one of these crazy VR headsets on, or you could just do it in the browser as well. So very cool, but that ability to use augmented reality and virtual reality to access a meeting environment or a conference environment is, um, is quite the thing. And our technology works brilliantly kind of within that environment as well, which is very cool. And talking of cool things, one of the things that we're really excited to be at Vegas for and at Ventech Live today is to launch what we've called Interprefy Avia, which is our brand new AI event translator which is quite the breakthrough. I, I like to say to the guys that we've kind of invented C-3PO in a way. So it's this way to use technology to interpret from one voice language into another, which is very cool. And you might think, well, uh, how did we get there? So I'll just do a really quick timeline for you guys. So as I mentioned, we were founded in 2014 and it was all about remote simultaneous interpretation. And then in 2021, we developed this ability to turn speech into text. So in, in what we're doing today, my English, English-ish, speech into English captions. So that was only really kind of, what, two years ago now in 2021 that, that we, we made that possible. And then in the same year, we built an AI benchmarking platform, which doesn't sound the most exciting thing in the world, but it's actually really important. So there's lots of different language engines and pieces of technology that you can use to translate from one language to another. And what we started to do was to benchmark those and to figure out which engine works best with which language combination, because kind of some, lang some engines are good for some languages and may not be good for others, which is why we kind of wanted to understand how do you measure these engines and how do we rate kind of the quality and the accuracy of, of what they're able to do. So we started work on this benchmarking platform. And then in 2022, we found a way to turn the speech to text into different languages. So it kind of started off with a few, we could do English and Spanish and French. And then now we can do that in over 30 languages and over a hundred combinations, which is really cool. So again, a really kind of affordable way of breaking down those language barriers in the same way that you can watch Netflix, you can watch an English film and then watch it with Spanish captions if you want. It, it's a fantastic thing. And then after all that work, 2023 has got, it, got us to this incredible place of AI translated voices, which is what Interprefy Avia is capable of doing. So that kind of does two things under the Avia umbrella, which, it, which is our name for that technology. One is the real-time translated audio. So it's that ability to flip languages from English into French, English into Spanish, English into Turkish, for example, all using technology. And we launched that yesterday to the press and live at the event. And hopefully you've heard that running on the main stage. I think we've got three different languages running live, all doing AI voice translation. So we've got 24 languages for launch, including some regional accents. And we'll talk more about accents because that's quite an interesting part of it. 
And then we also have this multilingual live captioning technology that sits under the AVIA umbrella. So let's talk about captions just for a second. So as I mentioned, there's over 30 source languages that we now support for live captioning and 140 language combinations. So if you think about how you might have had to do this in the old days, you would have needed a stenographer or you would have needed an awful lot of stenographers to try and do that. But AI technology is meaning that we can break down those barriers. You can do it at speed. You can do it at a relatively low cost as well. Um, which can be a really fantastic addition to an event setup or even just a simple one hour meeting where if you've got people attending the meeting where English is not their native language, you can use those captions to make the content more accessible and easier to understand because it's a lot more difficult translating in your brain where English is your, not your first language and you're having to do that kind of as you go. So that's really important. It's very flexible. It will fit into lots of different platform integrations, uh, like our friends at Hubelo over here, for example. They're live streaming the entire main stage broadcast today in their platform for virtual attendees. And then we're using our technology to broadcast live captions and also the live voice, which is amazing. And there's a small point in here about glossaries, which I wanted to touch on as well. Again. Glossaries is something we use to help drive accuracy, which of course you guys will all know is extremely important. And it's the glossary that allows us to almost teach the engines important things like people's names and brand names. You know, we always say Interprify is a fantastic brand name, but it's not a real word. So language engines won't understand that unless you're able to teach them and upload that kind of special content, if you will, using a glossary tool. So that's really important. So all the speaker names, for example, today have all been added to the glossaries on the stage and the brand names of everybody who's been speaking today. So all that is accurately reflected because there's nothing worse than seeing your name spelt wrong on a stage, right? So that's really cool. And then if we come on to voice for a second again, We've got this ability to translate in 24 different languages. And I mentioned accents as well. So regional accents can be a really big deal and can actually make it quite difficult for interpreters. You know, if somebody's got a very, very strong uh, Scottish accent, for example, or an Australian accent or, you know, whichever, a South African accent, that can make things more challenging. But the AI engines have got so good over the last two years that they're able to still generate captions and generate kind of interpretation, not just understanding the accents, but also we can add those accents as well. So you might want some uh, translation done from a French source language, so somebody speaking French on stage, and you'd like that delivered in English, but with a US accent, because who really wants to listen to a British accent all day long, right? Um, so yeah, we can basically deliver those with different regional accents, which makes it, I guess, more appropriate for the venue setting, which I think is really important. So why, why do we care about any of that stuff? What are, what are the, the important benefits? So it's really simple, actually. And we talk to event organizers and meeting organizers a lot about why you might do these things. And one of the first things is because you can reach audiences in different regions with your content or with your uh, webinar or whatever it is you might be organizing. So you don't have to be restricted just to the geography that you're in. So you might have this fantastic webinar that you're doing, it takes a huge amount of organizing, the speakers are all in English, and you think, oh, well, I can't broadcast that in you know, places where there's that language barrier. But by using simultaneous interpretation or captions, you can reuse that content or have it broadcast live into different regions where traditionally there would be a barrier on language. So it's really cool because it means you can get a better kind of bang for your buck when it comes to spending your very closely guarded marketing dollars, you know, which marketing budgets are always under pressure, right? 
Um, so reusing different content in different areas and different regions is a really cool thing. And it means you can kind of sweat those assets much harder. So that's really cool. Um, it means, of course, that you're breaking down the barriers for accessibility, accessibility and inclusivity. And there's some quite unusual kind of use cases for that as well. So quite often you get people who are trying to listen to an important webinar or a meeting. Maybe they're in an airport because they're traveling and it's really noisy and it's very hard to then listen to the audio. So being able to follow that through live captioning is a real godsend and can be an absolute benefit um, for people in noisy environments, as well as those who might have challenges kind of with their hearing. So you've got a real plus in terms of accessibility from that viewpoint. Um, and then the, the kind of third thing that we started on in a way is that ability to reduce your carbon footprint. So you're not flying people around the world where you don't have to, and you can provide that language access without the cost and the logistics of having to transport people to do the job because it can all be done remotely or even through AI technology. And the cool thing is you can do all that stress-free and you can do it even a bit last minute. So God forbid anybody try and plan an event last minute and it all be a bit pressurized, which does happen. But even say the day before, if somebody says, oh, do you know what? We've got a load of people attending our webinar, but they only speak French, no problem at all. Because using AI, that can be added really quickly because we're not having to book kind of the, the human interpreters that, that might take a couple of weeks beforehand. So it can kind of remove some of the panic, if you will, and make the logistics a little bit easier. Having said all that, it's still incredibly important for lots of events to make sure that you use a traditional interpreter because they have a, they're a stunning conference level interpreting that is really important, particularly for things like farmer events or if something's legal and you need the quality, the quality to be extremely high. Often there's no substitute for using a conference level interpreter. But one of the cool things you can do is mix that up. So you can use some AI technology, you can use, use some kind of human interpreters. So you might have that for some voices and languages, and then you can use AI for others. So it's not an either or, which is pretty cool. So I think a couple more slides to go and then we're there. So we've mentioned the ability to do that online and on site, and we've got loads of ways that we can integrate and provide that access. So we can do that through browser links, apps, through the event platforms, all good. On site, much the same. We can use mobile apps, we can use the screens, transmitters, all of this is absolutely possible. So I don't think we've yet to find a combination that we can't support. So if, even if you've got an unusual setup and you think, well, you know, can AI work in that setup? Give us a shout, I'm sure we'll find a way. And then just a quick thing on what makes Avia different. So just three simple points here, right? One is we're using best in class AI technology. So remember all the benchmarking stuff that I talked about at the start? That's the way that we make sure that the quality is super high. The improved accuracy is done through the glossary. So again, if you're booking an event, make sure that you give some real attention to that glossary because it's the speaker names, the brand names, the product names that make all the difference and really make people think that the quality is super high. And then the other thing is this ability to provide natural voices. So we had a really uh, interesting experience yesterday where somebody was listening to the AI translation in French. And when we were talking to them afterwards about it and said, oh, how did you find it? They didn't realize it was AI. They thought it was just humans doing the translation as they might normally do. So that's really cool. So those voices are pretty natural and it's often hard to tell the difference. So yeah, AV is pretty cool. It means you can do all that. You can do it with short notice. You can simplify your event logistics and do it cost effectively. You know, that's often one of the things that we find is a challenge. People don't always think about translation and interpretation and language barriers early on in the budgeting process. It's often one of the last things that's thought about. They might think, hey, what coffee do we need? What sandwiches are we having? Oh my God, what languages do we need to support? So quite often it's an afterthought. And so budgets can be a challenge as we all know when organizing events and using AI means you can do that same thing but often at a more cost-efficient budget, which is pretty cool. 
and that my friends is that so thank you very much for listening i hope that's been interesting for you guys and if anyone's got any questions we can take them now or of course swing by the interpretify stand we're on d22 just by the main stage i know i've seen lots of you guys uh, over the last couple of days which has been a real treat but yeah hopefully that's been useful for you guys has anyone got any questions now or are we out of time all good but grab us afterwards my colleague richard's around as well and yeah thank you for your time and ears to lend today cheers <laughs>